Rutland City Board of School Commissioners. And um, all commissioners are in attendance with the exception of Stephanie Studley, who is in the process of getting on. So she should be joining us any second. Um, so our first order of business would be the Pledge of Allegiance. So all that wish to join, please stand in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, so next up is roll call. Um, so I still don't see Stephanie. So all commissioners are in attendance with the exception. Uh, Stephanie just Steph reached out to me and she said she is working on getting on now. So I've got, okay. I've got Abby Studley in the attendees. I believe um, that would be her probably. All right, let's check it out. Here we go. And if it is, I can rename her. Stephanie, is that you? <laughs> no, it's not. All right, we're going to move you back. Okay. Um, so the approval of the agenda is the next item. And our agenda is the reorganization, consent agenda, and so forth. So move. Okay. And is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. I think Brittany and Hurley and then Brittany second. Um, any discussion regarding the agenda? Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And any opposed? Okay. And the motion passes. Um, so the... Next thing, Stephanie's still not on. She just actually said to me, tell Rob to send it to her personal email. I've done that. I will try again. And I think we lost Anne too. <laughs> so, um, so the next thing on the agenda is the board reorganization. So we'll start um, by welcoming the new and re-elected board members. So with us right now um, is uh, Charlene is with us <laughs> and Trisha, and then Stephanie will congratulate her when she hops on. Um, so I'm not sure if we have any updates because the next order of business is going to be the election of a chair and um, we will hold the elections. We typically do by Australian ballot. So we will be emailing um, to Rob is going to be the confidant um, since we cannot have paper. And last year we Dick did it because he was no longer with us, but we don't have anyone in that capacity. Aaron. Yes, I'd like to wait for all the board members to join since the technical difficulty. So I would suggest we move on to the consent agenda and the other items. I, I believe that's really the best course of action. And Australian ballot is not how we typically do it. It's typically a nomination and a vote. Australian ballot is somehow done in, if there's like multiple people nominated, but that's not how we've done it in the 11 years I'm on the board. So the vote I, has been by Australian ballot. We've always said it out loud over the years, Allison. Thank okay. you. Well, we didn't last year. Uh, well, that's because we were on this this format. Yeah. And on this we did, format, we did paper. We, did paper we can send to and, and Bill Olson like we did last year. He recorded it. And the year, the time before, we did in little notes and gave it to to the clerk. That was yeah. because there was multiple people, but yeah, right, which is an Australian ballot. And that's all that I'm saying. Okay. Again, I think we should wait till all the board members are okay. I yeah. think everybody's yeah. here, here now. Here Everyone's now. on. You guys, just so you know, everybody's here now. I apologize for the delay, but we are all here now. Thank you. Charlene? 
you're you're muted, you Charlie, me? or we can't hear you. I guess you're not muted though. Try it now, Charlie. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so yes. Yep. Yep. Now okay. And, and okay. So my my question before was was it breaking up before or is it just me? Like, did anybody hear any any of the audio breaking up? No. Okay. Then it's just me. Thank you. And Hurley, before you had said something and I couldn't hear you because Aaron was I, talking I just as well. I'm said sorry. what we did last time because we're in this format is they can met, uh, met, we did message Bill last time um, for it. Um, and Aaron is right. If there's more than one person running, then what we do is we write the names down and, and the superintendent checks it. Right. Aaron was saying we don't do that. But that is what I was saying that we do. And Rob was offering to work in that capacity for us. Okay, so then we would just message Rob with our vote. Right, that is what I proposed. So, um, Bill? So, Allison, if I would just, if you're going to message, I just remind everybody to private message to Rob. Yeah, I think email would probably be the email might be better way to go. Yeah. I think that's what we did last time. I think that's what you did last time, yeah. Yeah, we emailed Dick because I remember there was problems with people getting his work email correct and votes were missing. Um, so any other discussion regarding the plan? Okay, and Rob has put his email in the chat and he also sent us all a link for executive session so you could always steal it right there for the reply. Um, so the uh, next on the agenda is um, the election of a chairperson. Um, so um, I would, you know, anyone out there? Dina? I would like to nominate Allison for the chair. I'll second that. Okay. And Charlene? Can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. I don't know what's happening. Uh, Hurley Kavakis, please. Yeah. I'd, like, I'd like to nominate Hurley Kavakis, please. Okay. I'll second. Okay. And any other nominations? Okay. So. Everyone, we'll take a minute and everyone can send Rob their votes. Again, I'm coming through, Rob. Yes. I don't know if you okay. can hear me. Well, yes. Just let us know when you're ready. Thank you. I will. It's taking a moment. They're landing.
I'm just waiting on two more votes. I apologize. No worries. All the board members have the emails. Okay. Anyone need anything? Okay, just double checking my accounting, making sure I have it right. Okay, so I have um, 11 votes cast, which means everybody cast a vote. I have six votes for Hurley Kavakis and five votes for Allison Knopp. Congrats to Hurley and thank you so much to Allison. Thank you. Thank right. you, Allison. Thank you. Thank you, Hurley. Um, so I will turn it over to you. And yeah. I think the only thing maybe not known on the agenda is the executive session. So, and that Rob sent out an email for that. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd like to take nominations for clerk right now. Kathy? I'd like to nominate Ann Dages for clerk, please. Second. Okay. I'll second that. All right, Stephanie. I'd like to nominate Aaron Shimp for clerk. And I'll second that. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, please um, cast your votes like we did last time directly to Rob Bliss. Please bear with me, I'm just counting again.
at, at this point I have, I have 10 votes that I can see so far. Um, but I have a majority already. So I have 10 votes cast or received. I'll keep watching for the last one. And if it shows up, I'll add it, but I have six votes for Aaron Shimp and four for Ann. Congrats to Aaron. And thanks so much for Ann for your willingness. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Rob. Okay, uh, next is our regular agenda, consent agenda. And I would like to have someone make a motion to add the um, additional personnel memorandum that we got in the email today. Um, personnel memorandum number 620 addendum. Anybody would like to make a motion to accept the consent agenda with the addendum? Uh, yes, I'll make the motion to consent to the new <laughs> to the the agenda with the addition of the personnel memo six twenty. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any dis well, there is no discussion. Um, nobody asked to pull anything out. Um, all those in favor of the consent agenda, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so carried. My understanding is there was no public, Rob, that registered to speak today? That is correct. Okay, so we're at the superintendent's report. Uh, Hurley, I think, do you have student reps report first? Is that... uh, oh, student reps report. Yes, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Yep. Yep. I'm rusty, Bill. I'm rusty. That's okay. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Hi, I'm speaking for Hannah and myself today because Hannah couldn't be here. Um, in mid-March, we enjoyed parent-teacher conferences at both Northeast and Northwest. Uh, the silver lining of the pandemic is that our families are embracing conferences over Google Meets and the old-fashioned way on the phone. The turnout was great. Northwest students enjoyed a fabulous PBIS celebration on March 17th, hosting a leprechaun scavenger hunt and a visit to a beautiful rainbow with a pot of gold filled with kind messages written by the children uh, and a special Lucky Charm type snack at the end of the day in the classroom. Likewise, Northeast students celebrated their PBIS efforts and successes by hosting an outdoor event with bubbles, music, hula hoop dances, and sidewalk chalk art. And finally, Northeast and Northwest are the proud recipient of the Cliff Year of the Book Grant, awarding $25,000 worth of books and programs to each of our schools um, in 2021 to 2022 school year. Northwest thanks teacher Jody Perry for taking the lead in writing the grant proposal. We look forward to all of the the grant will bring to the students of both schools in the next school year. Um, for the middle school, in the last few months, students made pennant flags with messages of appreciation for the Rutland Regional Medical Center employees for the work they're doing to protect our community during the COVID-19 pandemic. Each student designed uh, and created their own flag with messages of encouragement and thanks to the essential workers. The flags were strung together for presentation, and thanks to Owen Bafford, Anthony Sabino, Mackenzie Barnes, Aidan Farwell, and Sophie Perone, who presented the flags to the Rutland Regional Medical Center on Thursday. They were met with leadership teams from RRMC to hand over the pennants, which will be on display throughout the building during hospital week. This is the second year that RMS has been invited to participate in the GIN conference. It was an exciting day for our RMS students. Georgia James and Fintan Smathers did an outstanding job re representing us in the opening ceremonies. Um, thanks to the collaboration with Marsha Castle and Erica Wallstrom, our students were able to participate in Global Village discussions, which were based on the United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Students were excited to share their ideas about no poverty, quality education and gender equality, to name a few. This is our, 
This is a great connection to our start of 2021-2022 school year, which will focus on the SDGs. And finally, the governor has lifted bans on music groups, so our band and choir students were able to participate in music activities in person. Students were super excited to play, even with being six to nine feet apart and using special PPE to ensure a safe environment. Orchestra students who have been playing for the last month performed a morning mini concert for the middle school, health office staff, and intermediate school. They sounded spectacular. We are excited to hear more music in the next coming months. Rutland High School will be hosting the yearly Global Studies and STEM Fair with lots of student involvement. Winter sports have come to an end and we are, have a smooth transition over into the spring season. The governor has released new guidance for COVID-19 policies, which will affect sports, end of year activities, and the normal school days. There will be more information coming regarding these changes. Thank you to all the students who participated in the gin fair, or the gin conference, and made the experience so memorable. We hope everyone has a safe and happy break. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, now we have a uh, presentation on the Global Issues Network. I think Marsha is with us. Um, there will be a student presenter to do this report. I will share okay. slides for her, however. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Marsha. Hello, everyone. Thank you for letting us share a few reflections on our most recent Global Issues Network conference for this year. Um, my name is Ana Sofia Aguilar and I'm a senior at RHS. I will be joined by Madame Castell who can help me respond to any questions you might have after this brief report. The Global Issues Network, frequently referred to GIN, was born in 2003 at the International School of Luxembourg when teachers were inspired to involve students more directly in taking action to solve global challenges. Their focus was based on the 20 core topics articulated by a former member of the World Bank in his book, High Noon, 20 Global Problems, 20 Years to Solve Them. Ironically, next year will mark the 20th anniversary of publishing that book. Jan International held a demonstration conference at the Vermont State House in Montpelier in 2013, to which teacher and student representatives from RHS were invited. The following year, RHS hosted its first Jane conference as an extension of its then emerging global studies concentration and has been holding them ever since, fully funded by a grant from the Roland Foundation. On the day of the Jane conference, traditional classes are suspended and the entire community is engaged, the, the school community is engaged in the conference. Our opening ceremonies include a keynote address from someone who is recognized as an important voice concerning the theme of our conference that year. As you can see on the slides, these are some of the previous themes we have, we have had over the past years, which includes sustainable energy, climate change, human migration, global infectious diseases, um, education for all, artificial intelligence, equity and inclusivity. And this year's theme was consumption, how we use, misuse and dispose of our resources. I was fortunate enough to have my design chosen as the logo for the website banner this year. This year's GIN also offered an exposure to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs for short. Given that all 193 nation state members of the UN have pledged to work together achieving these 17 goals, it was important to spend some time with this framework. We were, fully, we were able to fully experience the conference in person and on campus when we are fully able to experience this. There are morning and afternoon breakout sessions where students and adults from all over the state showcase their work. Next year's, fingers crossed, we look forward to again presenting the RHS capstone projects to live audiences, as opposed to this year where we had to pre-record sessions and were posted on student design and maintain conference websites. We look forward to resuming our fieldwork service learning opportunities, to tinkering in the makerspace, to feasting on a delicious vegetarian lunch, and to re-extending the invitation to schools outside of our district to join us for the day. 
This year, however, we were very pleased to include the Rutland Middle School. We are always grateful for the full support of our IT department, but the conference organizers have been particularly inspired by the ingenuity and commitment of the IT staff these past two years of fully remote and then hybrid, deli hybrid delivering our events. Future events will be enhanced by what they have helped us accomplish during these challenging times. The gym serves us with several things, including by encouraging us to think beyond today and beyond ourselves by giving us a chance to try international foods and to entertain other perspectives, by empowering us to be leaders, facilitators, project managers, communicators, performers, designers, activists, and doers, and last but not least, by valuing and bringing together all of our collective skills and interests, which are all necessary if we're going to create a more sustainable, equitable, and peaceful world. If I could ask you, administrators, superintendent, and school board commissioners, for anything on behalf of the students who will follow, I would say, please continue to insist on space, time, and funding for the GIN conference and on similar events that permit us to apply our learning and to practice being in charge. Thank you for this chance to speak. And thank you, Mr. Bliss, for managing, or Mrs. Hill, for managing our visuals. If there are any questions or any comments, please, you can ask anything at this time. Thank you very much uh, for that report. Uh, the June conference has been wonderful for our district all uh, these years. Allison. Yeah, thanks so much, Ana Sofia, for the presentation. Um, just a question about, I think this was the second year you guys had to go remote. Um, wondering if there might be some benefit to having a remote component in the future when we're able to gather more and if you're kind of able to en engage more students or more presenters having availability due to lack of having to travel and any thoughts on that. Um, I'm not sure where our keynote speaker was from. I'm not sure if Ms. Gasell could answer that. I don't know if it was maybe was from Canada. Yeah. He was from Canada. So certainly in the future, we would be able to reach for people um, who might be further away, uh, might be less costly to host. Um, last year, we had people from Costa Rica because we were one of the only gen conferences that prevailed in the face of the pandemic. Um, we've tried to do outreach over the years to other schools. And in fact, other schools have been here as presenters and as attendees, but uh, certainly the, the, the IT, the, uh, the virtual component could help us expand our, our participation. Great, thank you. Thank you for all the great work you're doing around it. Anybody else have any uh, questions or comments? I do. Okay, Erin. Thanks. Um, I guess just going back to Allison's question, which was a great one, and Marsha, thank you for the like the I guess presentation piece. But from a student's perspective, Anna, um, how do you feel that technology piece, you know, played a role, positive or negative, and and um, you know, just from your perspective. Um, I think everything worked out great. I did. I had to be um, a facilitator with like my own group of students where and I presented like a slideshow talking about this year's theme. And the only thing is that a lot of students wouldn't really like unmute. It was more of like they would send like a chat or like a comment and which was fine because I would just kind of like say them out loud and kind of give my own perspective as to what everyone was trying to say. But I definitely do know from past years, we could actually get like kids talking in classroom and kind of like have them tell their own side of it instead of having like me have to kind of trying to like get my own perspective of what they were trying to say. So that was definitely something. And I know from other groups and facilitators, they had like kind of the same thing. They kind of talked the whole time, which it was okay. Like I know I understand students don't really like to unmute and stuff, but it was definitely different. I think it, it was, it would, I think it's better to have in person, but obviously it worked out fine having the circumstances. So. Thank you, Anna. Okay, any other questions or comments?
None that I can see. Thank you very much for that great presentation and that wonderful program uh, that you have. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, I believe uh, Equity Work Update uh, by Patty and Greg is on the agenda next. Hi, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Thank you so much for allowing us to speak tonight. Um, we're thankful for the opportunity to share um, the work that we've been doing and how we're growing and improving as a community. Our equity anti-racist work is simultaneously difficult and essential and powerful learning for all of our community. We'll only be successful if we work together as a community and pool our expertise and experiences. So we're really excited to share um, what we have been doing along those lines over the last year or so. We have worked with and learned from members of the NAACP and the Restorative Justice Center as community partners. And although we've talked to a lot of people, those have been kind of the prime focus of people who've helped us. Um, I just wanted to mention that it's been interesting because we've had an exchange. The president of the NAACP, as you may know, was Tabitha Fulmore and is now Mia Schultz. And we met with Mia and the educational chair, I believe she is called, um, Julie Connison, um, a couple of weeks ago, had a great meeting with them. And then Brock um, also has had a change in their community justice um, center. Lisa Ryan was the head of that, and um, Amanda Wolf is their new, I believe she's called a chair. Um, so their ideas and feedback on addressing racism in our school and community have le led to some of the following changes and improvements that I'm going to go over with you. Um, our behavior program is what I'd like to talk about first. So we've made some pretty major changes in it, um, including our restorative justice circles. We, along with Amanda and Lindsay Hallman, who is a program director for Up For Learning, we've talked about how we can put these circles in place as community circles and restorative practices um, with our students, um, and then including their families if necessary. Uh, we have successfully done that um, about, uh, I would say probably, I don't know, I see Megan is there, Megan Marsh, my assistant, so Megan, just out of curiosity, do you know how many circles we've done in the last couple of months? I would say just over a dozen. And we've had loads of success with that. We actually um, have a teacher, Janet Pringle, who has been trained in, um, and thanks to the board for supporting that and our administrators, um, she has been trained over the last year or so, and she'll be going to another training in May to be able to be a trainer of um, of teachers to do those restorative practice circles. So we're pretty excited that that will be infused within our school. Um, we've also, I'm sorry. Okay, we've also redesigned our response to negative student behavior. Um, we've used some reflective practices with students so that we have, um, instead of thinking of um, the typical kind of, um, uh, um, Oh, what am I thinking of? Um, suspension, thank you. Typical suspension that we have commonly used in the past. We know that suspensions are, um, as I'm sure you've heard them referred to as the kind of school to prison pipeline. And so we've decided that we really wanna change that practice. So we have actually spent quite a bit of time um, having conversations with students and doing these reflective practices where we ask them questions, have them possibly stay after school or they do it in, in a flex block. And they are um, answering questions like, how effective are the consequences that you've had in the past how effective have these new consequences been like restorative circles and those type of practices? Um, and what do you believe as a student and we've asked their parents and guardians this question as well that um, our teachers need to do to um, promote effective disciplinary practices? And they've given us some really great information about that. Um, then our school culture. 
I think one of the most important things in our school culture is looking at how we design our curriculum and our instructional practices, obviously, that go along with that. So to that end, in the beginning of the year, we began um, working on an identity project where we asked all students to talk about personal their, themselves as a person. Who am I as a person? And who am I as a person within my community? So the, the Rutland community, as well as their greater um, their greater, I mean, their, their, um, their family community and then the Rutland community. <clears throat> and um, that was a really successful unit for our, our kids. They were really able to show who they are as, a, as an individual. We've also used the sustainability development goals that were just presented by um, Anna Sophia at the, um, at the GIN conference and we'll be starting our next year. Um, with that in the lead of um, some identity work that we'll be doing with kiddos. Um, and I think the one of the most important things that I've heard from a number of people that we've talked to um, over the last year is we need to keep in mind that when oppression occurs, targeted people of color are more negatively affected than others. So even though we're all impacted by the things that happen in our schools that are, that are negative, um, we just have to always keep in mind that that people of color definitely um, feel that oppression much more severely than we do. And then just briefly continued education that we're doing in our faculty meetings, we are doing culturally responsive practices. They're good for all students and they're particularly good for um, students of color. Uh, four practices are to be transparent and intentional about teaching culture, to take an appreciative stance, to provide mirrors and windows and to educate about and for social justice. So the mirrors and windows that we talk about, um, when do we provide opportunities for students to kind of um, look out the window to see people who look like them and who are like them, their cultures um, in our schools, as well as of course the mirror that I just talked about as far as um, personal identity. So when we look out, when those students look out into their, our school, obviously we don't have um, the numbers of people of color who we would like as adults in our school. So how do we bring those people into our school in positive, um, um, powerful ways by having them as speakers and those kind of things. So we're really working on that in the future. Of course, um, right now with the pandemic, that's been a little difficult to get people in, but we are, you know, we're, we're working on that right now. And um, also planning a literacy audit where we'll go into our libraries and um, see what books we have, what are we promoting in our libraries and making sure that those books represent the, the school, all, all of the members of our school. Um, PD for staff on calling out and calling in in difficult conversations and then collaborating with other individuals in our state and community um, like Quinn Ganell and Rachel Mark who have uh, planned, they're from the Tarrant Institute, who have planned with our humanities teachers to teach social justice issues using books such as The Hate You Give and Chains. So to summarize, we will never uh, tolerate racism in Rutland Middle School. We'll continue to work as hard as we possibly can to eradicate that from our school. And we know it's really, really hard work and we're really willing to do it. So that's what we've been working on. And um, I did wanna just say that during our NAACP uh, meeting that we just had, um, I think it was Mia who said that she was really um, pretty excited about our meeting and that usually she gets a lot of pushback from people when they come to talk and she was particularly excited that she didn't get that pushback, that she felt very comfortable with the um, direction that we were going in and the fact that we had used a number of the materials that she had offered to us in our faculty meeting. So we were pretty happy about that. So um, I don't know if you have any questions or comments. Megan is here if you have anything for her as well, um, but I wanna thank you so much for um, allowing us to present tonight. Uh, I think I saw Kathy Ann. And then Tricia, so we'll start with Kathy, not Ann, okay? Thank you. Um, I was wondering if you could speak to the Zoom bombing incident. I don't know if everyone knows what happened, but um, I don't even know exactly what happened. Um, and I'd like to know how, how it happened and how it was addressed and if you've been able to determine who did it. 
So I'm more than happy to talk about that, Kathy. Actually, what I just talked about is how we've handled it. So what I just talked about are all the ways that we've handled it, but I'll, I will happily go back to the beginning of it. I'll ask Megan to help me with the technology piece. She obviously um, is a little bit younger than I am and uh, does a really good job with the technology part, but I can start with the fact that, um, as you know, we use Zoom as a platform for our classrooms right now. And um, when, when kids are in classrooms, a lot of times they have a black screen and they have their name on the screen. And what had happened in a number of our classes, I believe there were six of them, is that um, the, like if you saw my screen right now and it says Patty Beaumont, people got into the system, but they weren't Patty Beaumont. So they had the name Patty Beaumont, but it was somebody else there behind that black screen. And they were using um, racial slurs and saying really negative, nasty things during these classes. So the teachers in the classes obviously immediately stopped and shut down the class and um, tried to figure out what was happening. Um, what we did from a technological standpoint, I'll have Megan talk to right now, if that's okay. So from there, uh, once the, the teachers had taken care of the immediate uh, problem, we worked closely with IT and we were able to track IP addresses. And so we got a list of all of the students in all of the impacted classes and we were able to make some connections between um, there's a public IP address, which is the internet source that you're using. And there's a private IP address, which is the device that you're using it on. So we were able to find some correlation between classes, which let us know that it was, um, you know, there was one student that was impacting several different classes on different houses. And from there, we've spent a lot of time trying to uh, determine who owns that, that local IP address. At this point, we haven't had any success, but we are continuing to monitor students as they sign in so that we can try to uh, narrow down our search based on, based on IP addresses. We don't wanna tell you a whole lot because we are still in the throes of, of that investigation. So um, obviously this is a public meeting, so. Um, and how was it addressed with the kids that were harmed by the? Well, as, I mean, as I said, so um, what we've done is we have been training our staff to work with those students. We've talked to the students. We've done some circles with the students as far as reparation goes. Um, you know, who was harmed? There were a lot of people harmed, right? Because a lot of um, classrooms were impacted by it. So really just talking and um, you know, kind of being there for particularly, you know, as I said before, our students of color who are much more impacted by it than the other students. Um, and, you know, it's, 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 it's a very delicate, delicate situation because you have kids whose name was there as though they were saying those racial slurs and it wasn't them. And so they felt incredibly guilty and, you know, didn't really know what to do because, you know, we, we learned quickly that it wasn't them. So, um, you know, it's really just about talking to, to each other and trying to, you know, form relationships between all of the kids in that class, you know, strengthen the relationships between all of the kids in that class through our advisory program and things of that nature. So, um, and we will continue to do that. Our counselors are also spend a great deal of time with students from those classes, trying to help them organize their thoughts and feelings and, and support them. And if anybody has any suggestions for other things that we can do, I know that, as I said, we have been working with outside agencies so that we get their ideas and they say to us, why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? And so that's what we're doing right now. And we welcome that information. <laughs> so if there's any additional things that people can think of, um, please let us know and we will gladly do anything that we think will be helpful. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, who else did I see had a hand up? Uh, Trisha, thank you. Hi there. Can you guys all hear me? Yes. Um, yes. I find it extremely disheartening to hear that it sounds like there is some racism going on in the school. Um, I would dare question, has it been something that has recently escalated or has this been an ongoing issue? I'm curious if with all the racial 
um, training and whatnot that you've had, if there may be a correlation, perhaps it's diver, you know, it's causing um, friction perhaps within the school system. And is it faculty members or is it children? And what are we doing to take care of the situation? Are we, I mean, if it were a faculty member, it's quite obvious that they wouldn't have a job. So I would assume that we have some kind of tracking system as far as um, who this is happening with, mm -hmm. how often it's happening, and that we would be putting controls in place specifically for the mm -hmm. offenders and not be looking at it as an umbrella of the student population. Um, I, having had children in the school and have children in the school, haven't really heard about the racism being a, a common thing. So I'm just, I'm kind of curious where this is coming from. Um, I, I definitely think that, you know, we need to be taking care of this specific situations as they arise, um, not per se having such an umbrella reaction. Um, because I think that you're going to find that you're going to have more people that are acting out the more we are, we are segregating I feel segregating when you're doing that black versus white. Um, I don't know that I'm in complete um, alignment with mm -hmm. all of that training personally. I think that we're creating division. And so I'm just wondering if somebody could speak to whether or not the division has actually escalated with the trainings or if this has been status quo and you're just addressing it now. Thank you. Okay, Patty or... Um, there she is, Megan. Um, I'm happy to start and then maybe Megan can go from there, Hurley, if, if okay, you'd like. Thank you. Um, we certainly have, um, what we do is we teach tolerance. So that's what we've been trying to do throughout our, our um, the two years that I've been there, certainly um, as an administrator. I'll say, Tricia, that um, when I was there as a teacher, um, I think that there was definitely uh, racist things that happen that you would qualify as racist. Um, we handle a lot of individual things by our bullying, hazing and harassment laws. So many things that happen in schools are covered by the laws of, of our, our state and our locality. Um, as far as, um, I'm trying to think, I'm sorry, I'm trying to put this all into one answer. So, um, you asked a lot of a lot of great questions there. Um, I think that um, this year, year and a half, has been a challenging year as far as social media, as far as everything that's happened in politics for middle school students, and they are very cognizant of what happens um, from a social standpoint. So I think that. The fact that we might have a rise in the um, more blatant displays of this is not um, unusual, I wouldn't say. Um, I think many, many schools, I know many schools that uh, friends of mine who are administrators um, in other schools and other states um, deal with very similar issues. Um, I think it's a nation that's struggling to figure out how to get along with each other. And our kids are just a microcosm of it. Um, Megan, do you want to have anything to add or? Um, no, that's, I think our school is, is a microcosm of, of Rutland city and of Vermont. And we're seeing very similar issues to, to what's going on in, in our city and in our state. Okay. Thank you, Brittany. You have your hand up. Yeah, I just want to thank um, Patty and Megan. I think that the approaches um, that you're taking uh, on such an issue are are something that in today's world right now, especially in the last year and a half, what happens at you know the national level, the state level, the local level, um, I think it's the best approach for the middle school. So I, I really appreciate that. Uh, you had just mentioned the movie, The Hate You Give, or The Hate the hate we give, yeah. um, which hate I actually, care. yes, I, I watched it during the pandemic. And okay. I think it's a great thing, especially for that age group to be able to kind of relate to that and to be able to see what it's like, you know, Rutland isn't, we're not, um, 
excluded from everything that's happening in the world. We are a part of that. So if we can teach the kids to be on a, on a higher level or a bigger level than, than what they think or what, how they realize, you know, we, we may be in a small area, but on the outside of this, you know, the surrounding town, you know, there's a big world out there and we need to make sure that, uh, you know, the kids are aware of what's happening and are tolerant of one another and can learn how to protect one another as well. So I, I really appreciate everything that the, the two of you have done. So thank you very much. Okay, Allison and then Kevin. Thank you. So, yes, I appreciate the work that you guys are doing around this. It is certainly a big topic and much bigger than any of us. Um, I, you know, respectfully disagree that that it is not an umbrella treatment. If you're looking at things and you're saying, well, the majority of students are not affected by racism, that really goes beyond the total aspect that racism is typically against a minority. Minority of students are have just as important as any other student to have equal access to their education and feel comfortable in their classrooms. Um, and I think it's very important to move beyond tolerance. We need to move to acceptance. And I think that the work that you're doing is very important and I support furthering it. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Allison. Kevin? I'd just like to echo what everybody else said about appreciating the work that you're doing because it's not easy work to do. It's a difficult uh, process, but it's, it's great educationally for, for our students to be learning. Um, I was wondering if you have had any um, Native American Abenaki uh, speakers come, uh, come to the school to converse like the uh, NAACP folks have done. Not specifically um, at this point in time, Kevin, but as I said, we are looking to get some speakers into the school and it wouldn't just be, you know, it'd be all people of color. So not just you know, specific to black or brown, you know, black people. So brown people okay. as well. So absolutely. Um, and if you know of anybody, do let us know. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you for all the work you did, Patty, and your committee. Um, and we will be bringing you back for updates as we go through. Thank you so much. Thank you all very much. We appreciate the time. Have a good night. Sup Superintendent's report. Really, I'd like to go, but we, we skipped Greg. Sorry. <laughs> Greg, I'm sorry. I didn't, I just thought it was one presentation. I didn't That's put the a, agenda together. I apologize. No, that. it's totally fine. That's okay. Just ditto for what Patty said, move on to the superintendents. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> great job, Patty. Um, so uh, thank you. Uh, thank you to the board for the opportunity uh, to address you this evening on this important topic. I've been asked to address recent, effort, it's our, recent efforts at RHS regarding equity. Let me begin by saying that Rutland High School is committed to educating students a, in an equitable environment, but B, about the need for an equitable work to improve the broader community. So it's kind of a, a two-pronged approach. A is concern for the, the school community and the learning environment, but B, as a place where students can learn about the importance of equity when they leave that smaller environment. I heard the word microcosm used quite a bit. So first, the context of this work begins with efforts that have been ongoing for actually several years. As you know, first the board, the district's administration, the, then the faculty, and finally the full student body of RHS engaged in implicit bias training with Bo Yang from the Vermont Human Rights Commission. The entire student body engaged in this training just about a year ago at the Global Issues Network Conference, which we just heard about this year's version from Anna Sophia. The theme of last year's conference was inclusivity. This year, under Rob Bliss's and Pam Reed's leadership, the district has initiated an RCPS equity committee. I believe some of you are participants in this work, which serves to coordinate and provide oversight to each school's efforts. That group has developed consensus on the meaning and agreed upon definition of equity, as opposed to equality, which in part talks about, and I quote, 
interrupting systemic practices, equal access, and everyone getting what they need, close quotes. This work was shared with the high school faculty at the March in-service at the March in-service meeting. In addition, this group has been working with the middle and high school student governments to bring this work to the student body. Just last week, I had the opportunity to see the short video that they've created, which includes both students and faculty. They're planning an event and a facilitated discussion with Rutland Middle School, Rutland High School, Stafford Technical Center, Grove Street Campus, and Allen Street Campus. In addition to this group, Rutland High School has created a building level equity committee to bring that work to the in the building and ground level. This faculty group has undertaken a curriculum audit to determine the degree to which multiple perspectives are included in our course curricula. In addition to the student, government's eff to the student government efforts, this work is ongoing and continues. I tried to supplement these efforts during Black History Month by emailing daily announcements and Facebook posts of prominent scientists, leaders, and artists who are people of color. We've also included displays in the library and the building for both Black History as well as Women's History Month. More recently, as the winter season came to a close, athletic director Mike Norman and I scheduled and met with two of our athletic teams, and Mr. Norman also met with the school's athletic council. We discussed this past year and their experiences as Rutland athletes. I asked the student athletes to identify ways that we can leverage the athletic program to ensure the kinds of behaviors that we want to see and encourage in students. We discussed the values and ideals that represent Rutland High School and that we wish to encourage in students who are involved in the athletics program. Students in this dialogue, students identified the importance of treating others with respect, inclusion and good sportsmanship among other values. In addition, at the spring sports meeting, I spoke with students and families about the fact that they serve as ambassadors for the school and that they are expected to live up to that high ideal. Using this student input from these student meetings, we have begun to develop an ongoing program in which each sports team will engage in a conversation about our expectations of behavior as a school and within the athletic program. We will combine this with the material that Bo Yang developed and introduced to provide student athletes with the vocabulary and skills to proactively address behaviors before they happen. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer whatever questions you may have. Um, thank you very much, Greg. I do have a question. I actually, um, well, it's actually for both you and Patty. What are we doing about the social economic discrimination that's out there uh, very rampant, especially with the number of students um, who are living in motels and being serviced by our district? Yeah, I, thank you, Hurley, for bringing that up. I think to start, before I answer your question, I think you've hit upon one of the great challenges of this work, because when we talk about equity, we're talking about equity in a, mul in a multitude of facets. So racial, gender, income, age, like there, there's, there's a multitude of uh, facets to this discussion around equity. So the first thing that we've really tried to do is to keep the discussion as a multifaceted discussion. You know, it's not okay to treat, um, you know, uh, people of a particular gender okay, but to not treat people of a sexual orientation not okay. That's, that's not acceptable. So we've been trying, the first thing is to keep the discussion at a level where what we're saying is, what's important is that we're treating others with the respect that they deserve whatever the particular identity is that is at issue. So that's the first thing is to keep that, uh, to keep that discussion uh, at that sort of, uh, at that equity level. The second thing is, um, I think the, the reality is uh, with the percentage of our students, both in the district as well as the high school, 25% of our student body comes from outside of the district. So uh, with our total population 
and Rob Bliss may know this number more updated than I do, but it, the, the last time I checked, the, about 40% of our students uh, qualify for free and reduced lunch, which would be uh, a marker of the kind of income uh, inequality that you might see in a student population. So I think really the way that we've tried to address that is through the work that we've done and the training that we've done with Bor Yang, as well as uh, some of the other works, Madison Aiken has done some really great work in the district uh, to provide uh, a, cor a course that a number of our faculty has taken. Um, what we talk about is a lens. So not so much like, a, not so much like this particular action, but that when we're looking at a particular issue, so for example, when we talk about students going to internships, uh, PLACE is a really successful program. We're asking ourselves the question, does this require that this person have transportation? If so, we need to address that because that's an example of income inequality. So what we're trying to do, Hurley, in answer to your question is, insert a lens in all of our discussions, including curriculum um, and in including opportunities uh, where students can access their education. I think uh, the IT department and Patricia Agner is a great example of the extraordinary step that was taken in the last 12 to 15 months where not everybody has a laptop that they can access schooling. So by moving online, we had to first make sure that everybody had uh, access to, to that technology. So Hurley, thank you for, for bringing that uh, really important question. Okay, thank you. Patty? Absolutely, and um, I would echo everything that Greg said. And the one thing that I think is super important is that we, we, take, we determine what each individual student needs. And I think that's how we ensure that we are giving kiddos what they need to be able to access their education fully. And he obviously just articulated beautifully many of the examples, but even right now with remote learning, I mean, that's a really important piece of learning for some of our students who do really struggle with economic issues in their homes. Um, you know, the food that we give out on a weekly basis, um, you know, to, to certain families when, who need it. Um, just all of the, the things that our community, our school community does to support all of our students. But you're right that those students who struggle economically are definitely um, kids who need our, need our support. I mean, just so many kids need our support right now. Mental health issues. I mean, there's, there's a lot of them. <laughs> Thank you. And I think I saw Stephanie. Put her hand up. Yep. Um, this, my question is for uh, Greg. Um, why did you only meet with two teams? Uh, was there an issue with one of them or both of them that made you particularly pick like those two out of the all of them that you could? Um, that, you know, there had been uh, an issue that was uh, that had been raised back uh, in the winter season, uh, which I think was part of the, the discussion in wanting to kind of get this going. Um, candidly, looking at the list of the names, I probably had, I probably knew the students on those two teams better than I knew some of the other teams. So to some degree, I think there was even kind of a, a comfort level. Um, my interest in talking to the two teams at the end of the, uh, at the end of the winter season was, I feel like we have to, I feel like we have to elevate student voices in decisions that we make within the school. So this was an opportunity for kind of a focus group. Um, they're kind of a, a cohesive group that has worked together. They know each other. There's a degree of comfort in talking with, in front of one another and talking to each other. Um, and, and I will add, it, it, it's not very scientific, but these were two teams that I felt like I knew pretty well. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank both of you for all the hard work you've been, you were doing and continue to do. And uh, we look forward to hearing how everything is working out. Mr. Olson, Superintendent's Report. Early, you, you built me up twice and now, now I, I hope I, Hope I have something exciting, or as good as the work that that uh, 
Greg and and Patty and uh, Marsha all talked about. Um, so superintendent's report, I'm going to talk briefly about what else, the pandemic. Uh, I just want to update the board on, in the community on where we are with the pandemic and our response to it. You know, things are changing. There's been news that has come out from the governor's office. So let me, let me just give us an update on that. Since the last board meeting that we had, our regular board meeting that we had, we have seen an increase in cases in Rutland County and consequently our school community, just, just as Megan had said before, we are, our school community is a reflection of our, our greater community. And uh, I would say this is probably the most active four weeks we've had with the virus through the last, over the last 13 months, we, we've been very busy with cases. Um, it does appear that now we're got some degree of leveling, leveling off a little bit. I don't know if we're, necessarily going down in cases countywide, but uh, but it seems like we've steadied. Um, but we want to make sure that the community re members realize and remember that the pandemic's not over. Even though we've had vaccinations for uh, all staff who, who've asked for them, we, we still have a ways to go with this. So we do appreciate the commitment that the community has given to the health guidance, and we want to thank for certain the families and, and our staff for helping us work through with those quarantine protocols when we've had to use them. But that said, the Agency of Education just last week re released some new guidance that's going to allow us some changes in how we practice our safety procedures. So we've been processing through that guidance over the, over the weekend, um, today and yesterday, and we'll be sending a letter to parents over the next few days that's going to summarize those changes. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna get ahead of ourselves, but just to briefly summarize, the changes allow for more flexibility in distancing and in mixing students at the upper grades. And there'll be more flexibility on the travel guidance and, uh, and on health screenings as well. But more or less, most of the other aspects of the, gui the old guidance uh, are the same. So in a, in a sense, through the end of the school year, the old rules still apply. So we're gonna be working through this um, especially because of the last four weeks, we want to take our time and make it sure, make sure we make the right decisions. We don't, we don't want to open up too much that, uh, and have, our, have ourselves have a setback. Um, you know that the majority of our students have been in person through the school year. Uh, we're working to try to bring students back into the building who want to be in person for the rest of the year. But we also understand that some families would like to maintain that status quo where there are families who have access to remote learning and we are structured to, to deliver that. So the AOE allows it. So we are going to allow that to happen as well. Um, but right now it's more or less, we're, we're looking to bring students back. who want to come back and, and make sure that we have a good safe situation for our students while still delivering their educational opportunities for the end of the year. As for graduation, uh, we're waiting for guidance on that. It looks like there'll be um, some form of in-person graduation based on the, the guidance that came out on, on gatherings that are that is more general for the state. But before we make any specific comments on that, we're gonna wait and see what the AOE's guidance is for end of year ceremonies. Related to this, uh, over the last couple months, we've talked about the uh, recovery process and how we're, we began developing plans for recovery as we move on out of the pandemic. Uh, you, I think we've talked with you before that the AOE and the federal government, they've been sharing recent interpretations on how the district might access federal funds to support recovery. And I, I, I use the word interpretation, interpretations specifically because uh, all of that guidance is not yet complete. We're still waiting to hear um, how one of the one of the grants is going to be, how we're going to be allowed to use it. And by prior experience, uh, sometimes these guidelines have shifted on us. So we want to make sure we're clear and exactly how we can access those fund access those funds so we don't um, misstep. But I know I've said this before: the the three areas of recovery that we can spend money on from our federal grants are. Three areas. Number one is helping students recover any learning loss and promoting academic success. Number two, helping students better engage or re-engage with school if they if they have disengaged through the course of the year. And number three, helping students develop their social emotional well being and their mental health. So moving through this process over the last 
few weeks, Rob and the principals have been con conducting a needs assessment to be clear where we stand with student needs in the three above mentioned areas. We have to send that to the AOE by the end of the month and along with uh, like a preliminary plan of how we're gonna address these needs in the short term. When I say short term, I'm talking about how we're finishing off the school year and how we're gonna, going to address the summer, um, summer, summer types of interventions for kids. And then we're also planning for the longer term because we expect that we'll be able to ha have access to these resources over the next couple of years. So our intention is to really be thoughtful and impactful. Um, we wanna make sure that we're addressing the needs that we have with the resources that we have, the federal funds in other words. So we will continue to be reporting to the board on this as we go along um, and just wanna be clear, this is at least a two year enterprise. It's not something that we are just gonna be done with over, over the summer and, and move on. So that's the end of part one. Um, I wanted to highlight uh, a project from Stafford Tech that I, Melissa Connor informed me about. It's a project that Tony Bosnich and his power mechanics and welding students are, will be taking on for the USS Vermont submarine. This is a partnership that came about through a connection that June Kelly, our public safety instructor has with the USS Vermont. There's a support group that works with that submarine and they commissioned Stafford Tech the Power Mechanics and Welding Program to fabricate and build a mobile bell stand for the USS Vermont. So the bell stand will be used on a pier that's gonna be outside of the guard station uh, where, the, where, the, where the submarine docks. And the purpose of the stand is, hold the, is to hold the bell that signals the arrival of the commanding officer or other dignitaries. So it's, it's a really exciting opportunity for these kids. Um, and we're very honored to, to be able to participate in that. Tony and Melissa Connor met with the, the group that is offering the project to us. They reviewed uh, what we have to do and they are actually giving full design and rights to Tony and his students. And even better than that, the auto body program will be involved in it. They're gonna, they're going to be involved in painting the stand and the engineering program is going to design and fabricate um, the bell stand itself. And they're gonna put a, um, a logo on the stand that will identify itself from Stafford Tech, Tech Center. And then ultimately, June Kelly is going to have a live Zoom with her students and the commanding officer of the USS Vermont from the submarine. And they'll talk about how the submarine operates and um, how it's performed over the last, over the, over the recent year of its service. So it's a great oppor opportunity for Stafford and we want to thank those teachers for taking advantage of that. I want to also acknowledge another Stafford story and acknowledge the huge success that our students and staff had at the 2021 Vermont Skills USA competition. There were 59 Stafford Tech students who competed in 23 of the 33 available competitions and we placed in 19 of them. So pretty incredible results. Those students represented nine of Stafford's program areas they represented nine partner high schools and homeschool students. And in total, Stafford brought home 44 medals, real incredible number, 18 gold, 15 silver and 11 bronze. So those gold medalists have the opportunity to compete at the National Skills USA competition in June. And that competition is held virtually this year, just like everything else. Um, so congratulations to those students. Uh, Isabella mentioned, she took away some of my thunder that the uh, Children's Literacy Foundation Year of the Book Program, and I just wanted to thank Northeast and Northwest for applying for that program that, and as Isabella noted, noted that's $25,000 worth of literacy programs in support and books coming to our students. Each student gets 10 new high quality children's books. Um, and it's really designed to promote literacy and that kind of a culture in the school building, inspiring kids to read and write for pleasure and getting parents involved in their, their children's literacy activities, encouraging more reading at home. So that's, that's a great opportunity for them. Um, I also wanted to make sure we, we've worked on the mascot with Greg. Greg has been working on that through the course of the year. Um, and you know that story already. There's, we talk, spoken with three different artists who have, might be possible who could develop submissions for that, uh, that project. 
And Greg has also talked with Stafford's Digital Arts Program as possibly get, being involved in that as well. So we're, we're, we'll, we will turn to that. We've, I, I know that, that high school and Stafford have been extremely busy with uh, COVID cases over the last four weeks. It seems like for some reason, our lower grade schools had, were busier this year at the beginning of the year with COVID. And now it seems to be um, occupying the, the attention of the administrators at the, at the middle school and Stafford and RHS. So that work will continue. So that is my report from the superintendent. Well, thank you very much. I would like uh, to give a round of applause for Mr. Olson. He became a grandpa. <laughs> and he is down seeing his grandson. That's right. I have a little, little bit of spit up on my shoulder here. All right. Thank you. Um, we had two reports. We have the staff uh, relations report and building committee report. Both are in your uh, packets. Is there any questions or comments that committee members or chairs would like to discuss or members? I'm going to report in executive session. I, I was just going to say that, Dina, but I just, yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> I'll do a little building if you want. Sure. Um, so just a, a welcome in the sort of passing of the, the torch to our new um, the building and grounds director. Um, he's getting used to, you know, what's going on. And we went over some um, facilities assessments. And then an exciting project that is on the books is a mural project. So, um, you know, that'd be a really great thing for the community. And it's going to offer a lot of, you know, the inclusion and equity pieces that we talk about. So this is a really great piece that I'm excited to see progress. And we have an artist on hand. And um, yeah, we'll keep you posted. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, be uh, old and new business, before we get to the Weighted Study Coalition, um, I do want to remind board members that this is the time to let either Aaron or I know which committees you'd like to serve on, especially the new members. If you have any, the new members, if you have any questions, what the committees do, besides being in the policies and all of that, you're welcome to reach out to anybody on the board uh, to find out what they do in those committees. So I'm gonna turn it over to Allison right now for a weighted study coalition, how, where we are with that. Okay, excellent, thank you, Harley. So um, the current bill S13 that we talked about last time um, did make crossover and is in house ed and that is being taken up this week. So you can go online and see any of the house ed testimony and conversation around it. I sent an email to the board over the weekend, an action alert to reach out to the House Ed Committee members and discuss how important this is to Rutland and how it can really affect our students. And um, also, you know, since it will, it's in House Ed, it's also important to reach out to your house reps, whichever ward you live in within the city. And as a board member, um, let them know the importance of this. We have met with the full Rutland County delegation previously and discussed this, but it's important for people to start making those individual touches and understanding the impact that this will have on our school and our students. And um, that's it. Okay, thank you very much, Allison. Is there any other old business or new business to come before the board? Stephanie? <clears throat> Thank you, Harley. From the beginning, the process to modify the Raider name and Arrowhead logo was done in a manner that did not meet the standards of parliamentary procedure. Based on reporting from WCAX on February 5th, 2021, the name change was not going to take effect until 2023 or 2024. Even the school administration said it would take time to navigate the change from the Raiders to the Ravens. With that being said, the vote by the board was not to implement the name change. The vote in February 2021 was to accept the recommendation of the student committee to change the name from Raiders to Ravens. This was to allow administration time to implement the name change, yet the Ravens name has been preemptively used. Furthermore, the research reporting and review in this matter that was presented to the board was very one-sided and skewed. 
So therefore, the results were not weighted properly due to the fact that the Raider votes were not measured in the results. I would like to thank the students on the committee for their time and energy on the issue at hand. Their task was not easy, but I do want to commend their participation. The community at large has spoken and wishes that the Raider name and Arrowhead logo be restored. In addition, we would like to formulate a plan moving forward to ensure continued Native American education is provided. I move to restore the Raider name and Arrowhead logo effective tonight and request that all documentation and results of the survey, including the Raider votes, be supplied to the board chair within 30 days for a complete review by the whole board, including the vote for the Raider name. A uh, second, any second on that before I can. Trisha, that's a second. Okay, Kevin, you had your hand up. I'm a little concerned. Um, first of all, if the process that was done before was not thorough enough seems like voting on this tonight is the exact is even worse than what we did the last time um we've been listening to folks talk about equity and um teaching our students about equity and the impact on people of color of all sorts of different things that we do to to vote on this kind of a change tonight without looking at how that would affect how it would alter the impact on our students um, to get input from, I mean, to correct the wrongs that we did the last time seems really wrong. Um, I don't think this, I mean, if we're going to consider it, I think we should take our time and do it right rather than, I, I think this is a very wrong thing to do and I okay. don't support it. Okay. Um, I'm just going to say from what I've heard in that is there was going to be just a restoration until there could be a looking into all of the process that's occurred. Um, I do differ with you uh, as a board member on the issue you said about not tonight, because I think five of us were blindsided by a very well orchestrated uh, movement last March. And I think we just need to take our time. And I think what Stephanie uh, is saying is that the, bring, bring the information that was done to the entire board so that can be um, discussed. And Stephanie, I'll let you speak on that. And then Erin had her hand up next. Stephanie, you can Kat. go first. So I also disagree with you, Kevin, um, you know, the kind of like the point of bringing this back is to, you know, revisit it some and make it done correctly from the start. Unfortunately, we are now backtracking what was previously done. So there is, you know, some stuff that, um, you know, as I had said to um, talk and get it's, you know, it's all about education is really where this is. And the education piece that should have been done from the start is going to be implemented. Um, hopefully it's some stuff by the end of the school year, because just with timing and whatnot, just to, you know, see where we're going. But, you know, the implement implementation of education is a really huge part of this. And it has yet to be brought up. And so now there's going to be some clear, you know, of what's going to be happening down the line and, you know, seeing the results that were definitely skewed and, you know, we need to okay. see the real results. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Stephanie. I think I'm going to go back to what um, Allison did one of the other times where I'm just going to go around and give everyone a minute to say their, their spiel um, before this um, does go to a vote. If that sounds okay, we did that the last time. Uh, and Allison, you're in the upper left-hand corner, so I'm going to start with you. I'd actually, um, thank you, Chair. I would actually like to call a point of order because in order to even take this up tonight, we need a two-thirds two majority. So before we get uh, too deep and, into um, the- And not before I can forget um, when other motions were brought up, which were not on the agenda, including the last one of the acceptance of the Raven name, um, we did not- um, we did not go through the process correctly, and that has been verified. 
So we so can go back. This, and- I am calling a point of order in order to take up this agenda on the agenda. We need yeah. a two thirds vote. And I, so I would like the chair to take a recess and to review Robert's rules and give us a statute. Uh, Miss Knott, I will certainly do it. And I promise you, I will treat you much better than you treated me. Karen, you'd like to speak and then we'll I take would. a recess. I would. And I would like to really say that the initial motion for this was not on the agenda. So if that's what you're preaching, Allison, then you were very misguided on the first attempt on this when Kevin made the motion. And I was personally not treated correctly. And the friendly amendment was very wrong. So that is and not again, something- Aaron, the point of order is you Ma'am, cannot relive me, as, as you, as the you rule is on me, the floor. So you, you have said beat to me, me up Ms. all you not, want for the past year and not <clears throat> getting your way, but we must oh, follow you Robert's have done rules. Everything. It I'm wasn't not even a going year to start with. I've been treated. Curly, let me finish. We're going please. to take a recess. So Aaron and I can consult with attorney. Aaron texts me. We're going into recess. Allison, um, I need to know what rule was broken for your point of order, because that's what the point of order is. Um, and that's sure, it what is I've been taking asked. Up, uh, to discuss an item that is not on the agenda, it needs a two thirds majority without okay. prior notice. Okay. And then we can do the same then, evaluate the last meeting for the last vote, because that was the action item was not on the agenda. No, the way Robert's rules works is a point of order needs to be called at the time. You can't go back and reassess meetings of the last five years and what people did or did not do. Okay, so, um, all right, so we have a point of order and they're questioning the um, agenda item. Uh, of the new item coming up and taking a vote with it not being on the agenda on um, the port of order will be to continue, I guess. So a nay means that we will not be taking it up tonight, but putting it on a future agenda. And a yay would be we can take it up tonight. And we'll take the vote by roll call for point of order. Aaron, do you want to call everybody in? And again, let me specify that a yay for the point of order means that we will defer this item until next meeting uh, because it needs to be on the agenda. And a yay means that we will take it up tonight. So Aaron, if you would like to do a roll call, please. Sure, let me just get something to write with. Um, I, I'm sorry, do we have a ruling from the chair on the point of order or I, I'm confused? I am. My point of what I said was that I'm allowing this to occur as an old business item and brought up in non action items like we voted on the raving name. That's my ruling. I think we need to discuss it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow people to go around just like we were allowed last time to give their spiel on it within two minutes. And then we can either take a vote or those individuals who have the vote can can push it off to a new meeting like you can any other item. 
So start so we're with not you, Allison. The two thirds majority, or that is what your vote will be based on. My vote will be based on, because we have yet to suspend the rules, as I have brought up numerous times this year, and that we will vote on this as a regular majority item. If you would like to challenge it, you're welcome to. I certainly will consult the school's attorney in the morning. The point of order is the challenge, and that needs, yes. to be, that needs to be rectified before we continue. And that needs... Allison, okay. would you like to clarify what you mean by point of order? Because this book is really thick and there's a lot of options. So you can certainly tell me which one you're referring to, and I'd love to go to it. But besides that, you using the term has no validity to me or anyone else sitting here at this moment. Well, that's the fun when you're in the hot seat is people can just throw things out. and you. No, have you're the one right. who's always throwing a point of order out. Okay, here's what we're going to do. There is, is do. if something is not on the agenda, it needs a two-thirds vote to take it up. Okay, okay, then and that's that what Hurley is trying to do, Allison, and you continue. Okay, Actually, so he right said now, it was going to be a simple majority, that he was taking up the matter, and it was going to be a simple time majority. Time out, cool. Allison. Time out. Two things I'm going to say. Because this was brought up tonight, I will, I will recommend that this item get pushed to a warned agenda meeting as an action item. Number two, because Allison did not act properly and having an award without suspending the rules, uh, voting on the Raven name, I believe I will be, we will be checking to see for consistency purposes that that uh, vote be discarded and come up again. And that would be my recommendation. And that's what we're going through as chair. And So Harley, clarify for me which item is going to be taken up under agenda next time. The Tell next me the motion. Time Tell we me the will motion. Be, we, will, uh, we will be, they will move their motion. I'm going to request Stephanie to take her motion. Present it to Aaron and I and Bill for our next agenda as an action item. So therefore a simple majority will rule. At the next board meeting, that would be the, that's where the simple majority comes in? Yes, yeah, because it will be a warned item. Okay, and then I am invalidating the vote that was taken in March on the Raven name because for consistency purposes, if we are, if we are, if I'm literally as chair pushing this to the next meeting, because we need to have two thirds majority, because it was not an action item on the meeting no, agenda, it was not an action item. It was just a information. I invalidate that. So, Aaron, you have a question. I have a statement. One more, okay. and this is literally, if you cannot tell me, Allison, where you read that rule in the Robert's Rules of Book, what page so I can reference it, because I'm sitting here and I'm not seeing anything. So if you can't prove that to me right now and then, then I okay. think this needs to go to a vote. Okay. That, that's uh, not actually how. Kevin? Well, laws of the law, honey. Kevin? Um, I, I'm pretty sure we can't go back and undo what we did before. Just uh, we with can a vote of a majority. Vote if the vote was taken illegally and it was not done according to Robert's rules. I'm I pretty believe, sure Robert's rules doesn't allow us to do that. Uh, well, I'm going to have to look that up because I, I was going to say you you would need to co convince me that that's that that's legit. Well, you know what, Kevin, like I it. I apologize that I need to convince you, but I'm stating that's going to stay. I am pushing off the agenda. I will be meeting with attorney in the morning to clarify if we need two thirds majority because it was not on an agenda item for the name request tonight. Does it mean when the name went through without being an action item, can that be invalidated? And I will get legal counsel on that. And Good. Charlene and Anne. <laughs> Is it not true that um, past things have been discussed in the past by the board, whether it's, you know, can't can be brought up in old business? 
That's not something that can't be just brought up in old business. Uh, no, I, that's what because, I'm confused about. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. So it's okay. Um, you can because we've, been, we've actually been talking about the logo in old business in the past. And so I, so I'm, I'm curious. I'm not, I'm not understanding the, the issue here. If it's old business, we've discussed they're in the They're saying past, because it old wasn't business. warned as it was not warned as an action item that it would need two thirds majority, but she failed to tell us that when we were voting on the Raven name, because it did not pass the two thirds majority. And Anne and then Aaron, and then we're gonna move on. So that- I've had my I hand could, up since the last three people. Yeah, okay, as long as you can be polite, I don't have a problem. Anne, right. you're next. Didn't take it. <clears throat> um, Hurley, I'd like to summarize um, the info that you get. Um, if you can give us chapters, references, whatever, that would be really helpful. I can do that because what I will do is I will let you know tomorrow afternoon, if we are doing this for one vote, or does that invalidate the vote that we've had done in the past? I will be talking with Bill Mube in the morning to get clarification on that. And I will let the board know uh, from there where it goes. And as far as the um, agenda item goes, I agree we push it off until the next meeting. Let's put it on the agenda as an action item on the next meeting, so it'll be born properly. And so discussion can occur as it is. And then, okay, Allison, and then I think we're going to wrap it up because we have, need to go into executive session. Sure. So um, the Raven's name change, the name change was on the agenda. That is why it did not need a two thirds. Not as an action and item as, if you read it. It was information. Really, you wanted like, me to be respectful. Can there. you please return the favor? So um, it was on the agenda. I certainly will. I, I will not mute you like you muted me. Hurley, I'm, I'm trying to speak, but you are. And you were not muted because I never had that capacity. So let's not relive all this. We need to move forward and we need to function. There you go, Allison. Remember that. So Thank you. Continue. The board needs a two thirds if something is not on the agenda. The name proposal was on the agenda. It needs to be warned so that public can comment and that board members can be prepared to discuss the item. If it's not, then two thirds of the board needs to agree to take it up as they were not prepared to discuss it. That is simple Robert's rules. If an item is taken up and no one calls a point of order and no one says anything about a process, then that moves on. And Robert's rules, it, it doesn't matter if you acted appropriately okay. on them. So, so, so that's, what that's, that's saying how they work. Is, is I'll that be we're gonna happy to hear follow, from the and, and I'm okay, Allison, if I could just finish. Um, what, what you're saying is, is that we're going to push this off legally for the next and allow the legal election to occur. And I'm fine because nobody calls you on that. I'd like to have a motion right now that we go into executive session because we have some issues we need to discuss. And Aaron, I think you have the motion. So we'd like to go to executive session for the premature release of contractual, not contractual employee matters. Um, that would put the board at a disadvantage. And Bill, who would you like with you? Uh, for the contractual matters, uh, Ted and Rob. And, okay. And then Ted will let Ted leave early. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor to go into executive session, which I believe Rob has given you his link. It's set up right. and okay. it's set up and it'll take me just a minute to get there and open it up. Okay. All right. We will see you back in this when we're done. And Hurley, I'll be waiting here for when you return. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Are we all back yet? Mr. Bliss, you're counting. We're not all back yet. We have nine, I see. We're missing. That's because other people in there are counting them. Yep. We're missing Trisha and Stephanie, and I will try to rope them in again here. Hang on. Okay. 
they're going to need to learn how to get in and out of these meetings. Yeah. <laughs> you should have seen me trying to get into my classes the first time we went to uh, we went to uh, the uh, Zoom meetings in Champlain, and it was like I was losing people because I didn't know I when I moved to a room that I had to leave other people somewhere else. So, yeah, it was not fun. It's a learning curve. Oh, more than a curve, Dina. By the time I learn it, I won't need it anymore. By the time we learn <laughs> it, we will... Oh, I'm ready to we'll throw be back it across in person. the room. Oh, yeah. I'm re just ready to th throw it across the room. That's right. my... All right. So, so we're still missing the two. All, yeah, we're missing two. I'm going to check the attendees. We still have 25 attendees here. Oh, and, okay. I'm just talking also, while we're recording. So you know. That's good. Is yeah. this on Facebook? And we are recording. We are recording, and I don't see them in attendees. I just checked. Hmm. We should drill new board members in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Go yeah, in, go gonna, out, go in, go out. Send we, them links. If, send them like multiple keep, links. In and out. If we keep uh, this, if we keep this up, we're going to need to do Zoom training for every every uh, board in the state of Vermont. Or it can be like a, a little um, entering test. Like, can you? Can you? Can you? <laughs> A Zoom board member. An initiation? Is that what you're Charlie, saying? I can tell you, uh, Charlie, I can tell you, uh, like, a uh, uh, well-trained Zoomer. <laughs> in and out, in yeah. and out. Well, I've been, I have been in Zoom classrooms and Zoom sub-classrooms. All day long, yeah. yeah. Rob, yeah. Uh, Stephanie just texted and said that it's making her register from the original link. Patricia? That's a Patricia question. Yeah. And what about Trisha? Try another way. Hang on. So, um, if she is having to register, then she is um, using the attendee link, the public one, and that's okay. That should still get her in. I don't know that it did because when I had computer issues before, I went on my phone, and you guys couldn't see me. We um, all we need to do is uh, know that it's her, and then we can promote her. So, okay. if coming with the phone, it can be a little harder because we see a phone number. And do so. we know anything about Trisha? I'll wait a couple more minutes, but <laughs> Stephanie got in. So it's just Trisha now. Cool. Sorry about this. Okay. There you are. I'm new to Zoom. I'll have this fixed for next month in my Zooming, flipping back and forth. Well, this, this jumping in and out of the main webinar is is something we haven't done all the time so we'll give you a break it's, it's not easy for anybody as a learning no. curve here we'll i've gotten lost the, i've the gotten boot lost camp. jumping over <laughs> well the original issue was is i had the email my new email address on my phone but not connected to my computer so i couldn't okay. get in that way all right so and, and we just remember that we're recording we're in public session yeah so. Sorry about that. Yeah, 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 still, they should learn about our struggles as board members. Yeah. Anybody got um, Trisha's phone number? <laughs> Stephanie, can you help with that again? Is she in? Yeah. Hold on. Let me mute myself. Is she in limbo? Snow day tomorrow, Mr. Bliss. Bite your tongue. Uh, they're saying snow up in the mountains uh, towards the end of the week, I guess, but nothing here, I hope. I got my pool open. I'm ready to go in. Have we? Okay. I see Stephanie is on the phone with her. I apologize to the public. Um, once we get all our members back, we will continue our meeting.
How are we coming, Stephanie? Maybe? She's still looking for it. It's under the original email from Patricia Agner. We can wait. You... That email from Patricia would be the easiest way, probably yeah. most direct if it's still there. It would be an email from Zoom. Um, yeah. Well, it the... comes in your name, Ms. Agner. Thank you. <laughs> Patricia, can you send her a new link, please? Um, I she said can't. you can't. Okay. Um, but uh, Rob has a link, and she would have to sign up. What is her him. email? I can. Can I just forward it to her? You could do that, and then we'll you just can. have to change yeah. her name. That'll right. work, Anne. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Anne. What's Patricia's email? Something really long. Hang um, on. <laughs> Um, can you chat it so we don't <laughs> let's take a five minute recess. Let's take a four minute recess while we get her in um, and make sure we're all muted. Hang on. I'm in! Yay! We're on. Uh, who's got it? Okay. So our um, little break didn't last. Um, we go. are still, we are back in public session. Uh, we are being recorded and we do have an audience. And I'm going to look at Aaron to read a motion. Can hear you. A Aaron, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> I do read lips, Aaron. Okay. <laughs> I had it unmuted. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve employee action authorizing the superintendent to enter into an agreement that we discussed in executive session. Do I hear a second? Second. second. As I am not a voting member of the board as chair, I, uh, before even saying that, I do recuse myself of any voting on this motion. So Aaron, I'd like you to call the question and bring it to a vote. Thank you. Um, the all in agreement with the motion, please say aye. Or raise your aye. hand about that. Dages, yes. Thank you, Ann. So the motion passes. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay. And Thank um, you. unless Curly, turn it back. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So move. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Oh, aye. 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 Don't trip yourself getting out of here. <laughs> Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Thank Good night. you. Good night. Thank you.